Next, the news out of Ukraine. As Russia's war on that country continues, there is new uncertainty over the fate of hundreds of women, children and elderly trapped inside the steelworks in Mariupol. Russia is offering to allow the civilians out of the complex this morning. An evacuation like this one led by a UN team over the weekend. But so far, there's no official response from Ukraine. And indeed, we've just had reports this morning from a top advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky that there is new fighting there this morning. This is video from pro-Russian forces showing the ferocity of the battle for the last Ukrainian stronghold in Mariupol. Our senior defense reporter is Murray Brewster, and he's now joining our team in Kiev with the very latest on the fighting today. There is a bloody battle taking place inside the steelworks at the moment. Uh, the Ukrainian commander who is on the ground there uh, tweeted a short time ago that uh, there has been uh, a lot of fighting and that it is the second day that Russian uh, troops have attempted to get inside of the steelworks and they have been beaten back. Uh, as you mentioned, Heather, just a couple of minutes ago, there are about 300 or more civilians, mostly women and children, trapped inside of that plant. Russia had promised to have a uh, humanitarian corridor to allow civilians out. They promised to have that open today, tomorrow, and on Saturday. However, it doesn't appear that it is open at the moment, uh, at least that's according to Ukrainian officials. But elsewhere here in the country, there have been a number of airstrikes and a number of uh, air raid alerts all throughout the uh, uh, all throughout the country. It's been constant here in Kyiv for the last 12 hours. We've had at least three air raid alerts. Uh, two hours ago, we had uh, a missile strike uh, in the outer portions of the city. Um, there's been no reports at the moment of, uh, of, of casualties, but it is part of a stepped-up air campaign on the part of Russia, particularly in the western part of uh, Ukraine. Uh, there was a missile strike this morning near uh, Rivni, which is just west of here, a couple of hours west of here, um, and Russia is looking to hit the supply lines uh, for, uh, for western uh, military aid that's coming into the country. Murray, as well, you've been speaking with the former president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, and he, I know, is urging Canada to take a new step to show support for Ukraine and to push back against Russia. What is he calling for, Murray? Well, specifically, what he's calling for is for Canada to support a bill that has uh, been put before the U.S. Congress. Essentially, it is a resolution which would uh, enable President Biden to use American military forces should Russia use nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons, weapons of mass destruction here in the war in Ukraine, essentially drawing the United States into the conflict should there be uh, an escalation. And... Uh, uh, Petro Poroshenko, I had an opportunity to speak with him earlier this week uh, at his uh, at a warehouse where his private charity is uh, is collecting weapons, food, ammunition, equipment uh, to help equip Ukrainian troops. But uh, he was very specific. He said that Canada has to get behind this initiative. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. I definitely need to support this initiative from the Canadian parliamentarian and Canadian government. That is not because we want that uh, Canadian soldiers fighting here for us. No, that was just to stop the nuclear war. Now, his reference to nuclear war is that uh, he believes that uncontrolled, without some kind of red line from Western nations, that telling Russia don't cross this, that the conflict could escalate beyond uh, beyond Ukrainian border and, uh, and 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 spin out of control. Uh, what he's essentially urging is, uh, is is a warning to Moscow not to go in that direction. And uh, there are those, however, Heather, that question whether or not. Um, this kind of resolution in the U.S. is necessary. And there's also questions as to whether or not the resolution will pass, because the, the form of the, uh, the resolution that was put forward is uh, it's a, a legal mechanism in the states that is very similar to the resolutions that uh, the war on terror and also uh, enabled uh, the uh, the war in Iraq. So there's there's going to be great reluctance in the U.S. Congress to pass this bill. It remains to be seen whether Canada would be in support of something like that. 
That's CBC News senior defense reporter Murray Brewster. He's in Kiev this morning.